Welcome back to the School of Calisthenics. It is Q&A number 12. Oh. I am retiring my phone this week. I was a, I've got no questions. I was about to say, order has been restored. Restored. You restored, would say. I say, restored. I would say temporarily loaned. Anyway. Um, I am taking no question master duties this week. Yeah, I give Dave purely time and to shine. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Tim. And looking forward to it. Um, we have a couple of, uh, or a few really good questions from all across the different platforms, which good. is nice. It is good. Um, and so we're going to kick off firstly with um, Sean Roberts. Nice easy one, I assume that's his real no name. No question over that one, is there? I think I've got that one right. Um, and he commented on a YouTube video that exploded about your calves. Uh, <laughs> exploded? I'm still waiting for my calves to explode. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, he starts with, hey guys, great video as always. You're Check. on. You're on, you're in. <laughs> um, and a, a, an interesting question is he's talking about how, does you, how do we balance um, the strength training that we do in, in terms of, and we put like strength slash reps as in like, um, I guess that volume sort of side of training. Um, and how do we balance that with the skill practice when you're trying to learn something new? Um, how do we balance that? Um, and then... And how do you have enough time? So how do you balance that? And your, what does our what does our week look like? So if we give a bit of an insight into what does it look like for you, and then um, is is there actually sort of finishes off with like is there is there enough time for both? I, I, Which I think it's interesting. Yeah, it is, and it's something that comes up all the time. Like I replied to a Facebook message about this last night about how do I do this and fit this in and mix it all together. And and we've talked about this before. And I'm going to be annoying from the outset and go there isn't a, there isn't a magic solution, unfortunately. Um, it comes down to me to priorities these days because it's yeah if you were if you're a full-time athlete we can write all of these things in and we've got lots of different training time that we can play with and you kind of go i'm going to do this on this day i'm going to structure that i'm going to rest days but the reality for most people though that's just not the way that it kind of it plays out um so let's break it down a little bit because and we, we and it, while we're kind of going through how we might fit a few things together just think about what your week looks like and, and ultimately it comes down to priorities what do you want and how much time you've got to invest in it because if you you can kind of, in one of the books, we actually use like a blackjack, um, what's the word, analogy, Do where it? you go, actually, uh, have you not read them? No, I'm just thinking about <laughs> yeah. blackjack, as in like 21, pom two, yeah. like, isn't Pon yeah, I'm yeah. just trying to, yeah. I'm trying to piece so you, it together, I'm, I'm interested to know what the oh, analogy is, go on. Settle down, I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> you could, um, you could play small bets on lots of different hands. No, bet big, win big, Tim. Well, you ever been in the casino? That's exactly the strategy. You've got to, you've got to go. On, if you're going to go for it, if you want to win big, you've got to invest a little bit of money and risk losing it. Fortunately, with training, we haven't got such a, a monetary um, cost at stake. However, the principle of like, if you play smaller hands, yeah, you might you might get a few wins if you, if it's your lucky day. You start to accumulate a little bit of stuff here and there, or if you just go one hand all in then you're gonna to start to get a bigger payback. And that's the similar way to look at your training. You could do a bit of CV, you could do a bit of strength work, you could do a bit of skill acquisition, you could do a bit of like global kind of weight training or lower body training, it depends whatever you want, or do you wanna to learn to do a human flag? And it's, there's not a right or wrong answer in that. And it might be that you go, oh, I wanna to learn to do a human flag, but want those other things as well. Fine, just accept that it might take you a few more trips to the casino to get, your, um, to get enough money to yeah, I'd, um, really nice. I like that. I, like that. I did like it's it. A bit of texture, um, I <laughs> yeah, it's good. Really <laughs> nice texture. Um, but just at this point, just to stipulate that we don't condone or um, promote gambling. No, I'll tell you we about do. my gambling. I've I've been to a casino before, and I I hate losing money. So what I do is I go to to a casino. Isn't it? I actually went to Vegas one night in Vegas. Flew into um, LA one, one night, night and enough. left. <laughs> but what I would do is I go to a table, put down like minimum bet two dollars. <laughs> Play a hand, win a dollar. <laughs> no. Thanks very much. I've had enough now. I'm up. I'm I'm right home. I am. That's what I'm like. Because I think, well, I've got. I'm better off than what I came with. Yeah, I was trying to be like, um, we don't promote. We don't gambling at all. Yeah. Uh, uh, on that, do whatever you want with your free time. Yeah. yeah no, Computer not. gambling, ridiculous. Like playing against a machine. I'm just yeah. going to put that out there. And like, on the internet, I, this thing that comes about like. Oh, if people have got a gambling problem, why are you playing against a computer? I get, I mean, we're going massively off topic, but just on that, I get, not I get, I don't get, oh, sorry, no, I do get 
to a degree, like horse, like horses, because you're like people. Might, I, I've never done it, and I don't know about horses. But people can find out about the horse and yes. the good to firm and what's yeah, the yeah. tree, what's the, the running, thing, the running, yeah, and all that jive. <laughs> I like it. But then you can go in a betting shop and you can do a computerized one. Mm. Lucky dip. Well, like it's, you're watching a computer video game yeah. type thing of a horse. And before the race starts, the computer knows how much, which one you've bet on, yeah, presumably. how much you've invested in that it, it, it sitting of betting. Doesn't feel right. Yeah, no, anyway. We've gone off topic, haven't we? <laughs> um, um, training. Yeah, I wanted to add, so I wanted to throw a couple of uh, my two pence worth in. Um, something that Tim will often talk about um, with the skill acquisition side of if we're talking about handstand because I, th- I think sometimes it's interesting people um, how you define skill because yeah. we might some people might say that like when talking strength and reps he's talking his pull ups his dips his push ups his sort of mm. his, his bog standards and then go um, skill um, is we'd say handstand skill yeah and then go oh this other skill um, that I'm working on planche as a skill and yeah. front lever as a skill but when you get into the depths of like planche and front lever yes there's some like muscle activation patterning work and, and we can sort of put that under a, a skill but from from what we've learned in terms of training for those things they're much more strength based than skill based yeah. they're just very specific strength so they're like that, the applied strength part of the framework yeah. rather than necessarily a skill rather than hand balancing balancing like handstands other variations of hand balancing where there is a genuine skill acquisition part of learning the proprioceptive control of balancing on mm. your hands that does benefit from small doses regularly. It's like fine motor control, isn't it? Yeah. I, I think like skill, if, if we look at motor learning uh, and skill acquisition, I keep getting like doses, it can come under lots of different forms, but there comes a point in a front lever where the skill of can you connect these uh, muscle activation yeah. patterns together Yes, you can. Right now, you need to make that stronger. Yeah. And and yes, we can get into the, the neural activation side of strength work, and there is neural um, adaptations in, in higher intensity work. Um, but the, the, if we so you can look at it that way, we can look at it as a bigger portion of skill acquisition where it's fine motor control. So skill acquisition playing a piano is like you could just hammer a few keys and you could actually work out how to play a, a, a pretty novice tune. But to get a real kind of skill acquisition of fine motor control and, and a lot of the things like art and is a very similar. Um, chopsticks is uh, it, that's going to be a little bit more a, a different process so in terms of how we mix it together like Dave's touched on probably the main thing is what are you working on and, and the skill acquisition I actually like to do quite a lot of the skill work and we put in our movement patterning is the part of our framework where we kind of group our skill acquisition work in at the beginning of a session after I've done my movement preparation work so I've primed the body I've, I've, re- I've achieved range of movement I've activated some muscle patterns and then I'm going to go into a skill acquisition or movement patterning phase where I'm just going to learn something new we do it in athletes programs quite a lot where i just like the idea that the beginning of a program let's learn let's learn something new let's learn to move in a new way let's challenge ourselves to do something which we can't do already Um, and the good thing about that is you do it when you're fresh there is very minimal benefit for us in calisthenics of doing skill acquisition when we're tired we don't you can argue it from a sports perspective where you have to play under fatigue, but we're not in that, that type of, yeah. of situation and environment. So skill acquisition early doors, and actually what I find with skill acquisition work is if you're working on a handstand, for example, or it's even a front lever or, or muscle up kind of the activation patterns within that, it just actually serves as a really nice continuation of the warm up. So if we were talking corrective exercise um, with an athlete, we might go through some, some form of range of movement change. We might isolate the muscles that, we're, that are underactive that we're trying to charge up to improve the postural pattern, for example. And the, the phase after that is to integrate it all together and effectively educate the body how to move again with all this improvement range of movement and muscle activation. Skill acquisition is, is that. It's moving with purpose, moving with, with a specific outcome in mind and trying to learn to integrate and activate all of the systems to, to do something which it's not um, done before. And then, once you've done that, go and get strong. And whether that's specific specific strength or more global strength. So I'm trying to just piece together his answer a little bit for him. Um, That generally, they were saying, you're sort of saying that there is a skill um, acquisition part in the movement uh, patterning and the strength, like combined, and then the strength after, so com- combined in the same session. Yeah, that's where our framework is, works. It's so one well. of the options, yeah. Yeah, because we go movement patterning, which is essential for before you start a session, if you're going to maximise that opportunity, and you go movement patterning, and then you flow into applied strength. 
And applied strength is very specific strength. So the movement patterning could be quite sort of like activation based movements, not massive load, but more focus on the intricate feeling of the, um, of the position. And then the applied strength is, well, let's get strong in a specific position that you're currently weak in. And then that starts to bring in the connection of, um, of, of how you're gonna link in that movement pattern together, but under more intensity yeah. and higher loads. So it's actually really progressive in that way. So if you haven't done, I'd encourage you to go read a little bit more about the framework. We, we go into quite a bit of detail about it in the books that we, in the ebooks, yeah, which you can read about on the well. website. So just understand that process. And in terms of how we fit it in from a very simplistic approach, use some of your, your movement patterning, um, skill acquisition at the start of your session, and then you use the main body of your, skill, of your strength workout to, to go and get that kind of adaptation. The one thing that you just need to be aware of is, is skill acquisition, especially in hand balancing, is addictive. And you can very easily spend 45 minutes of a one hour session practicing hand balancing, and then go mm. to the end of it and go, actually, I haven't really done anything to get yeah. strong. And, and that getting strong is such an important part of your progression forwards. So just make sure um, that you've got a balance. And sometimes if, if you're like we are, we've, we've fallen foul of this so many times because we end up playing, which we're massive advocates of playing yeah. your sessions. But all of a sudden we've done 45 minutes of messing about and we actually haven't got strong. And you wonder why we're not strong enough to do what we want to do. And yeah. we haven't dedicated training yeah. time to it. Um, CV, touch on that probably. Um, you that, uh, uh, no, no, that's a different question. Oh. I thought that was part of the bottom one though. No, no, no. Oh. Yeah, that's the different. Sorry. We're jumping the gun. We're jumping the gun. Um, so, so just to, just to finish this off, um, I would, I would, I would suggest you look at the th the movements that you're trying to um, achieve, and are they truly skill based? Is it like you're trying to learn to hold your handstand, or even uh, some other hand balancing movements, where it's very, very much more skill than strength or is it a movement like a front lever human flag or planche or something like that where it's yes there's the skill element like you said but it's very much more strength based and if it's strength if it's more strength based you're not that's you're not going to be then trying to hit that like every session because you're just not going to get the adaptation in the recovery you want whereas if it is skill in terms of hand genuine hand balancing then that is something that you can touch on more regularly throughout the week. Like if you were going to learn to do the piano, you wouldn't just do one lesson yeah. a week if you wanted to accelerate that learning. You would do it regularly throughout the week, but just not yeah. do and it that's that. we'd, for we'd, an hour we'd, every day. We touch base with that. Well, I, I tend to touch, balance, touch base with my hand balancing before every single session. It's yeah. a bit of a refresh. And then depending on how much of that session content I want to dedicate towards my handstand work will be will determine how long that extends. But it might just be literally a few handstands to warm up before then go into a pulling session. I just yeah, like it helps it. as part of your almost five, 10 minutes finishes yeah. off your warm ups and nice. Yeah, exactly. Um, the, um, just to, the, I don't want to just don't want to extend the, the answer too long. But the other thing we haven't said is, in terms of periodizing programs for like we do for an athlete where we would go through different phases, um, there, there is a potential option, and I haven't discussed this with you before, so I'd be interested to see what you think, of going like, right, you're gonna do a four to six week block where you really actually focus on skill things and not worry about the strength, and then move into a block where um, you then do focus on mm. on the strength side of things and leave the and leave the skill almost alone and go through some some training cycles like that in a more of a periodized way rather than just forever doing the same type of thing until I yeah. die or stop training. I think there's a there's a there's a balance there in that just like when you're doing a strength session like you're going to go I'm going to do, I'm going to pull session today they'll get to a point where you can't do any more pull ups because you're tired. Um, and the same happens with skill acquisition. You're gonna, especially if you're kind of working at the limits of, of where you are currently able, which is where you need to be. You need to be kind of pushing that on a little bit. You're gonna to get to the stage where your skill, skill acquisition work and progression just starts to get to deteriorate within a session because the neural system's tired. It can't take an endless onslaught. So I think, yes, you could prioritize some of that skill acquisition work um, into a periodized block. I tend to, my personal feeling would be to, to, to spread that out. I think skill acquisition, it, it, is there's, there's some benefit of doing it smaller doses on a more regular basis rather than just trying to have an hour in. Um, sometimes it works quite well as a recovery session or you want to do something, but you just want to play around, but you don't really feel like you're fresh enough to go and start smashing out a huge amount of reps yeah. in terms of strength-based work. Um, so there's, there's, there's an option there to do a little bit of just, just balancing your hands for a bit and have some fun with it. And, and that's quite a nice little... Um, session which you can break up during your training week but um, 
Yeah, as I said, we, we, we touch on this a lot because we get asked about it, but there's, there's people that have written whole textbooks about it. The, the one thing that I would say is, and, and it's referred back to the framework, we've put a lot of thought into that and it's a very progressive approach to training. Yeah. And if you, if you start to structure your sessions around that and understand how you can manipulate it, um, it will take you to where you want to yeah. be because it's got every single component that you need to be able to do whatever you want to do in calisthenics. Um, and it's just then your decision of how much training time you're going to apportion to that. Yeah. Um, and we've got lots of exciting stuff. We're going to take this to another level when we, we've got some projects on the, on the go, yes. which is, we're super excited about. And it's actually, it's intimidating in a little way because I'm sat there going, this is really going to make me stretch me, but that is where I want to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And exactly. we're excited to bring some of that stuff out. So, yeah. Understand so, a bit more. Yeah, so Sean, hopefully that uh, gives you plenty to think about, like to, to ju just, he stopped listening 10 minutes ago. <laughs> for, for, for sure, and anyone else out there, it's a question that comes up a lot of the time, and it's um, take a message. Um, I would say, one, it's, it's actually quite, it is difficult and something that we find it is tough to try and get that balance right, so don't beat yourself up about it. Um, but make sure you're getting a little bit of a blend across in that, but just don't bite off too much. Don't try and work on four different skill things at the same time. Pick one or two and yeah, try and that's a, that's the take thing. What's your priority? Yeah. And then actually just go like, don't bite off more than you can chew. Go, oh, I'll do all of it because yeah. it's not going to happen. Pick what you want, prioritize it, give it session time, train consistently, and then evaluate after four weeks. But don't jump around all over the place. Yeah. Make a plan, roll it. Cool. So question two. Yes, question master. Good. Question two ties on nicely um, from or leads on nicely from that last question we were starting to get into and he jumped the gun and wanted to talk about CV but started to get into a bit like so then what does our week look like so because it because we're set up now with camera one camera two cam camera one camera two we're going to ask question two we're going to go to camera two oh, you like that so I have to look at there now yep okay. why not I'm going to ask the well you look wherever you want look at, you look look at your beautiful <laughs> face Dave I'm gonna, we'll get into that later um, amazing <laughs> so Neil Phillips you're number two. He is from Facebook. Um, he doesn't start with, it's a, why am I, again, an easy, easy name, and I think it's his real name. Um, why am I asking, why am I reading this question out if he hasn't given us a um, Com compliment at the start? It's the first and last time you'll get on <laughs> unless you maybe, change that. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, that sorted. Maybe we're getting less compliments. But anyway, so Neil Phillips, um, you're lucky for this one. <laughs> um, guys, what's the makeup of no, no, not the makeup, makeup that you wear. <laughs> What's the makeup of your week consist of fitness wise? Apart from honing in your calisthenics moves, do you have a normal weight session, CV sessions, etc.? So basically, um, I I, I'm taking that as like, what's your week? Like, give us a, a quick half an hour summary of what your week. <laughs> no, no, a, yeah. a summary of what your. Because I've got something that since coming back off holiday, I'm trying to stick to, and I've, so I'll do that start, after you. I think we'll start with that. Start I, with I, I banged on a lot before, okay. and mine will be very like, oh, well, it depends. <laughs> She's not getting that well, no, definitely, it still definitely does depend. Um, but since coming back off, um, I had a bit of a holiday after the retreat we did in Morzine, and um, super exciting. And I do this all the time, but I generally don't stick to it, so I'm trying mm. to stick to it a bit more. So I've written it down a little bit in my, in my nice little school class like notebook that we've now got. On brand. Um, and I don't know why I'm still talking there. I can talk to everyone. Else. So, um, what my week is trying to look like? Don't do any weights. Do you have any to answer that question? Shock horror. Shock horror. Um, calisthenics wise, looks is trying to look like this. Um, Monday, like the hard stuff that I'm working on, the things that I can't yet do. So, should be hopefully fresh on a Monday, beginning of the week honing in on the hard things that I'm trying to do so my front lever and, and planch work Tuesday um, lower body and a lot more sort of for me that's based more around trying to improve my hip mobility so some lower body stuff that's mainly focused on improving range of motion rather than um, rather than trying to make my legs stronger which is um, an interesting one for you actually I was jumping up because some of the stuff you're working on like your, your planch and yeah, your, yeah. your press to handstand the limiting factor for you yeah, it's totally, is yeah. your range of movement. So since I've done more of that, like yeah. things are starting to go a little bit there. And also starting to just go, well, what sort of impact does improving my hip mobility have on my shoulder? Mm. Um, and so a little bit of, and then a little bit of that session on a Tuesday is um, some, some shoulder health sort of stuff, some prehab stuff, some stuff around my shoulder to try and make sure that, that they stay nice and safe. So shoulder, upper body, shoulder health, shoulder lower health, body focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
um, after after the hard stuff that I'd done on on, on, the, Monday. on the Monday. Yeah. Wednesday off rest, difficult, find that hard to do. Um, Thursday, um, my pushing and hand balancing stuff, and then Friday play day. Yes, finish the week, and then at the end the and, and the and the so so play at the beginning of that session and then so split that section in half the first half of it play so like literally play around with some stuff that i'm just for fun um and often that's when you start doing some cool things but then uh, the second part of that session is like the base my, my basic reps and sets for the week of like right dips push-ups pull-ups um things that I don't have to think too much about because by the time friday comes around i'm pretty tired yeah um, the reality is i think i've done one week of that because other weeks there's just all sorts of like we've got a lot of stuff going on with the school of calisthenics but also with we've got the other business one athlete with the paralympic athletes we do so there's a lot of things going going on where um that just goes out the window a lot so the, the week that we're currently in monday I was in london all day tuesday i did actually manage to get a session in wednesday we had like meetings all day and did absolutely nothing other than just sit down and talk about business <laughs> yeah. and then Thursday and Friday, I'm not going to train because we're going to Newcastle on Saturday and we've got a workshop, so I don't want to be tired for that because you guys that are coming are going to want to see us demonstrate something. Um, so if we turn up and go, actually, I'm really tired from the session I did yesterday, um, my flag looks a bit ropey because of that, you're not going to be that impressed. So um, the reality of sticking to that is difficult, yeah. but that for me is a plan that when I, when I have been able to do it, it does feel nice. The difficulty for me is trying to to make sure that Wednesday becomes a rest day and not do too much. When do you do your CV? Uh, so, then, so, then the other, so then the other things I do, um, my CV and other things tend to be stuff with the Wi-Fi, AKA Wi-Fi, AKA Mrs. Jacko. So one of those sessions tends to be running around after her because she's much better at running than me. So we are big fans of park run, so 5K runs, or we've done a couple of 10Ks recently. Which is, that's, too far. It's actually nearly twice as far as a 5k. <laughs> I can beat Mrs. Jacko over 5k, but I can't beat her over 10. Because you've got, she's, 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 she's a type 1 athlete. She, is, she will just go yeah. all day. Um, and then the other thing we do is we try and do a hot pod yoga session a week. Um, that's not because I want to try and promote them. It's because I went there, enjoy it. It's good. And that's helping with my hip mobility for sure. So we try and get a, a yoga session in basically and I get a... My CV tends to be, um, yeah, 5K run or some of the, we do some intervals and stuff as well. Sometimes we mix it up. And then the other thing we do is um, got a road bike when the weather's crap. I'm a fair weather cyclist. I'm the guy that cycles without a shirt on and all the other cyclists with all their lycra on. If it's sunny, won't wave at me. Um, oh, really? Yeah, it's that not. not no. Joyce will do it with her football shorts on yeah, and yeah, she's yeah. not into it. So we don't, within the, we're rebels within the cycling like community, that. but we do, not rebels, we just go and do, we just go and do whatever. It's like, right, let's go and cycle over to there because they've got a nice coffee shop over there. How far is it? I don't know. I can get there in an hour or so. Like, it's not, it, it's, you might see it as CV and training. I just see it as a nice day out of my missus, but yes, it's training, but it's not training. Um, so yeah, so it's very much for me about that side of things needs to just be like fun, enjoyable type stuff. Like I like going out running, I like going out cycling. It keeps me fit, but I'm not, it doesn't feel like it's training. I've done way too much in the past when I was playing rugby where it was like from a sloggy guts out and you've got to do this, you've got yeah. to do this many sets, this many reps and da 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 and it's like, I've done that. Mm. <laughs> now it's nice time for doing. Tim, what's your week look like? So Monday <laughs> is chest and calves. <laughs> Tuesday is back and upper traps. I like to, sh you know those shrugs where you, you, your trap doesn't actually move but you get lower? Don't. That's what I do on a Tuesday. <laughs> Victory Visuals knows that too well. Harvey's done a great impression. Uh, yeah, yeah, I love um, all that sort of stuff. Um, no, I'm actually going to be the, the yin to your yang, David, because oh. where David's got what looks like now a great structured plan. Well, what I said was though that uh, that rarely happened. Yeah, no, but you've got an idea. Yeah. I have, I start the week <laughs> with absolutely no idea what I'm going to do. And that's the, the honest truth at the moment. Because is that, are you talking about your training? <laughs> yeah, 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 well, everything really. Um, because and it's for the reason that my life is a, is a little bit unpredictable, it's fair to say. Um, so like Dave says, we've got all the business stuff going on and, and there's 
creating content and there's all that really exciting stuff. And then we've got the, the Paralympic business. I also contract another um, governing body. So I'm in, I'm sort of not in Nottingham um, for, a, for a day a week, which, which completely takes out Tuesday as an option generally for me and, and everything else that comes with that. So I am an opportunist trainer. You have a baby. And I have a baby. That's I have a, a big I have an difference. Eight month old, my little boy Jack, who is um, who is very much on the move. So, as an as a side, I've I've made a rod for my own back because from two weeks old, I was like, let's practice moving Jack because there's a one thing that I can <laughs> give to him. Like I'm not much of an artist or a singer, so I'm gonna let's I'm gonna get him good at moving. So now, uh, this this little dude is like, you're like a rocket. You should see him. So I spend a lot of my time just shepherding him, as those of you that have got children will, will know all too well. Um, I can't wait to come round your house one day and he's like, Daddy, let's do arts and crafts. <laughs> and I'm like, sure. Um, so, uh, I haven't, I've got, we've all had a break, I went to South Africa to see the family and um, I actually haven't now trained for over a week. I was a bit sick. Um, so, and it... When I get opportunity to do a session, it, it very much just depends on, on, on what the week's looking like. I, I don't have the luxury of scheduling stuff in, and I probably need to. Yeah. Um, I just, and I, like I went, they're like, I'm joking, because I think for a lot of people out there will like panic if they don't do, like, what's yeah. going to happen if I don't train for a week? And actually, probably what's going to happen is you might actually, depending on what you've been doing before, you're probably super competent and you might actually come back better. Well, like, I think in the last in, four weeks, I've probably done four or five sessions. Yeah. And I bet you that's all the way back to before we went on the retreat, and, and so I really haven't done a lot of training in the last month. Um, so I've got a bit of a, a job to do to get back into it, but my, my basic structure, say if I had, if I had a, a run at a week and I, I knew I could get some sessions and I'm going to have to train a couple of times at home because I just don't have been at home for, to, for family time and that sort of stuff. So I've got a little setup at home, which means I can do some stuff, which is generally going to be more body work. Um, and then when I'm at the gym, I'll do some lower body session, a, low, a lower body session, which might be something around some, some dumbbell kind of lunge work, which I really like. Um, it's just exploring a few of those different things of pistols and, and shrimps are kind of just ticking over in the background. Um, and I, I, when I'm at the gym, I do things I can't do at home. So that might be just muscle ups or because I haven't got the head height at home to be able to do them. Um, or it might be some handstand push ups because I don't like to rub my feet up against my own wall. I'd rather use the wall at the gym and <laughs> make it dirty. Not wear clean socks at home. And... Well, you know my ass, I haven't got that much space really. So, um, so it, it, yeah, it really depends. And I, and I, I don't really like that. If I'm honest, I much would rather, much prefer be able to say, right, these are my training sessions and I think there's a job for me to do to look at, at doing that. But it's just... It's just the reality. It's yeah. the reality. And, and at the moment, like literally last night, I went to bed at quarter past eight and I flipping was buzzing about it. Because Jack's Jack was up this morning at quarter to five. So my days are long and I was lying on the sofa going, I'm just, I'm just tired. And so, so I got home, done bath time with Jack, got me to bed. We had some dinner and I was like, I, I, haven't, I haven't got in me now to do a session. And, yeah. and just not, I'm not, I don't hate myself because of that. Yeah. I would have rather trained this week or the last week, but it, it's just the reality. And that, that doesn't help you at all, but I'm, sh I'm a hope what that does is help some people who are sat there just going, I can't get a structure. Yeah. My message to you guys is just like me, don't worry about it. When you can train, take that opportunity because I, I might, if I have an opportunity to train, like I feel good, I'm gonna train. I'll try and bag that opportunity because tomorrow, even in the best or like the will and intention, yeah. I might go, I'm gonna definitely gonna train tomorrow, I might not, yeah. is the reality. Yeah. And therefore when I train at the moment, and this was just last year going into games was crazy. I was out of the country a lot. I had no energy because we were working hard. It was all over the place. So I just hit basics. And a simple session for me when I'm tired might be like 100 chins and as few sets as possible. I might go 150 dips, I might go 200 push-ups, yeah. like in a bit of a tricep. Yeah. And it, it, it's gonna keep me ticking over. I'm not gonna like shake the world of calisthenics by how much new stuff I'm learning, but I'm sticking on top of some stuff. Yeah. I'm throwing some play in there. And do you know what? Like I did some handstand stuff while I was away and it felt all right. Yeah. Like I, I, yeah. I think it's good to have some of those, those sessions in your back pocket where it's dead simple, not having to think about a lot. You're tired or you just, you, you know, yeah. you, like get that session. One thing, um, I'm trying to do better now, which I think will help. Also, is if if it is very sporadic like that, at least when you do do your session, right, keep a log of it what yeah. you actually did, just so that next time when you come in, you go, um, just try and remind yourself, oh, what did I, what did I do last? And if it was yeah. very, what, say it just happened to be happen? very, yeah, or say it just happened to be very, your last session happened to be very push based. Mm. You might want to go, even though you might want to do another put, you might be like, oh, actually, I need to make sure I get. A, decent amount of pulling stuff in this session yeah, yeah. just to help balance it out or 
you know, if it is really spread out, you always try and do a bit of a balance, push and pull yeah. together and that sort of thing. But a little bit of exercise science to, to, to finish this off. If you, so when we're going to take with athletes, we might be prepping for a competition and what we do is we drop some of the volume out of a training program to give them opportunity to rest up. But we can learn a little bit from that. From So if you, if you know that you've got a busy couple of weeks of work or your life's a little bit upside down like mine, all I need to do on a weekly basis is something of intensity. So that's the one determining factor that's gonna make sure you don't lose anything. And so research has shown that you can maintain strength levels for about 20 weeks just by making sure you're hitting some form of intensity on a weekly basis. So it doesn't matter how many reps you do, it doesn't really matter how much, how many sessions, how long your sessions are, it's, is it hard? So if I wanted to maintain my pulling strength, all I've got to do is a set of pull-ups on a weekly basis where I'm just like literally going hard out. Same with my pushing strength, and that is going to mean I'm not losing anything. I'm not yeah. gaining much, but I'm not going backwards. So that's a very simple thing to put your mind at rest. If you're worried about losing gains, intensity is yeah. your magic golden ticket. And your brain will tell you whatever you want to, it wants to tell you about what you look like in the mirror. But just life is life. And there's a lot of psychological stuff we could talk about, but that's probably for another day. Yeah. There's more to life than training. There is. Yeah. And, my, and Jack, is my, is, I, I want to... There was something we went to a conference on Friday, my last point, and we, we saw a speaker, she was talking about a life plan and stuff, and one of the things that she said is that she wanted um, her son, when he grew up, to choose to be her friend, and that's yeah. how I want to be with Jack. I don't want to be like, I'm not prioritizing pull-ups over my little boy, yeah, yeah, of course. because yeah. let's, get, let's get stuff in reality, and if, yeah. if I look a little bit smaller because of that, I'm not bothered. Okay, question number three, and the final question, is uh, comes from an email. So I told you to come across all the different platforms. So you can get in touch with us however you want. Um, if it's good enough and you pay us a compliment, then you might get your question answered. So it's from Mike, and he says, Hi guys, really enjoying the podcast and tutorials. Thanks, Mike. Guilty. <laughs> Um, and he was also glad to discover that Dave and Jack are the same person as he that's was having some time trying to work out who wore the hat. <laughs> I think that's my fault that I, I'm inconsistent with how I address you. Um, I, I, yeah, what you call me. Yeah. So I think it's how you dress me. <laughs> that's for another time. Um, so and don't do that <laughs> in the morning. Just to let you know, I'm only one haircut away from a mullet now. Well, <laughs> yeah. Move on. Danger, that's, we call that the danger zone. That's not, yeah, the flipping is dangerous. Let's give it no more space to grow that thought. Um, right, um, so his question is about um, injury and recuperation. So um, he's asking about, um, he's 51 years old, and we get a lot of, you know, we've got um, those that see in Graham, our 70 year old um, top, top student. Um, so I hope I can do the pec dance when I'm 70 yeah. and a clutch flag. Yeah, but, check, but he's proof that like age is just a number, and so he is. He uh, so if you've those people, I've had a few people that go, I'm 34. Do you think I'm too old? Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, Well, I'm older than you. And Graham's <laughs> double your age. Um, anyway, so uh, he's been doing uh, some some jogging work to try and loosen up his muscles as part of his warm up. But have you got any um, helpful ideas about trying to um, loosen up? what is called knotted muscles but tight muscles um, and any things to help speed up recovery or um, prevent injury um, other than the use of um, ibuprofen and gels that he's using um, and do we recommend using a physio um, he's coming to uh, the workshop in Manchester on the 2nd of December so we're looking forward to see you MC there form my Lloyd and yes. Ben excited to see you yes sold out very quickly that one so it's uh, obviously a popular one um, right, I'm going to drop a little bit on this. Yeah. So, a couple of things for, for knots and muscles that, again, we've referred back to it in the first question, but go and have a look at the framework. There's a whole section of the framework. So, for those of you that haven't come across it, we have um, two pillars of our framework, movement and strength. And within the movement section, we have movement preparation and movement patterning. Within strength, we have applied strength and capacity strength. The movement preparation is something that we do before every single session. It's just something we do with our athletes before every single session. It is possibly the most valuable thing that you can do in your session. And people look at it and go, well, it's flexibility work, yawn. But it's not, it's optimizing the opportunity that you're gonna have in the rest of your session. So if you can prepare your body for the session you're about to do, which is what movement preparation is all about, it means you might get an extra two, three, four, five, ten percent because you're moving better, you've prepared the body to, to coordinate itself, to produce force, to get into positions that are gonna challenge it without finding compensation, dysfunctional movement patterns, all of those things in calisthenics are golden. Yep. So within that, one of the, the massive tools that we use for everybody is self-myofascial release, self-massage, or basically foam rolling, 
or we use lacrosse balls a lot because they give a little bit more of a, a pinpoint accuracy and it's a great balance between something which is firm but also has got a little bit of give yeah. in it. So effectively it's a poor man's massage. If you were to go to a physio because you've got tightness in your muscles, you've got those knots that you're feeling, they're going to do some work, they're going to put some pressure on the trigger points. What's happening there is it's, it's resetting the neural, the neural overactivity of that muscle. So we get these, these adhesions which is a buildup of collagen, it forms in all random areas, it's a bit like a roadblock in the muscle. And the analogy that we use is if you had a, a rope and it got knots in it, that rope's shorter. If we want to make that rope a bit longer, we need to do something to take those knots out, which is some pressure point release work, which we can do ourselves. So by placing some tension on those trigger points, what happens is it resets the brain's neural activity to that muscle. We get a little bit of ischemia, which is basically some, some refreshing of the blood flow. So by pressing into it, um, all the blood leaves that area, then we stop that pressure point, the blood returns, it brings new nutrients, new oxygen, helps with the regeneration. It's an interesting thing that came out with, I've had, uh, uh, there's a, when I did my masters, there was a, uh, very many detailed conversations with one of the lecturers um, about this, and he was very anti ferro because it came from a place of applied practitioners rather than from a scientific background, but there's much more science coming out about it. The problem around it with the science is we actually don't really understand what's happening in, self, in massage and therapy, we don't really understand what's happening in stretching, is it fascia, is it collagen accumulation, is it neural, is it joint, all this kind of stuff. What we do know is that it makes us feel better. It makes us feel like we move better. And if we retest or test retest at the beginning of a session, we do a little bit of, of self myofascial release. Can I now get into a better position? Yes. Yeah. Um, and you can argue for the academics out there that that's a placebo. But if it makes me feel like I move better, it makes my athletes feel like they can get into better positions, then it is worth the five yeah, minutes. And if, I'm and if you're going to do some, uh, hand, some handstand training uh, or some handstand work and your overhead position in terms of the range of motion at your shoulder is improved by doing a little bit of release work yep. on your pecs and your lats. Whether it's whether you think it's a placebo or not, I guess, or whatever the mechanism is, it doesn't matter. If your overhead position becomes better, then that's gonna help your training. Absolutely. Yeah. So the, 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 the upshot and takeaway is if you, if you don't currently do anything like that, then just don't worry about how much static stretching you're doing. Again, that's a different subject and conversation about where that fits into a training program, but just Get, start doing something to release those tight muscles. Yeah. If you look at any of our textbooks that we've put out, or ebooks, sorry, with the, the, even from Beginner's Guide, any of the specific movements, the one that we're, 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 we're gonna have ready for the end of the year, which is our Intermediate's Guide, they all start with self-massage. Yeah. So starting to put that into your program. So five minutes before a session, so if you've got particular areas, whether it's upper traps, lats, pecs, hip flexors, whatever it is, yeah. just go to it. There's a stack of content in our free beginner's guide that give you the principles of what you're trying to do. So if essentially five minutes, find the tight areas, the bits that are a little bit gristly, the things that feels like it's knotted down and stuck together, get a little bit of pressure on them using a little cross ball or a foam roller, work through some gentle kind of like simple small massage movements around that area and you'll start to over time feel that, that pain level decreases and you're going to get an instant kickback but it's not going to solve 51 years of, of abuse because yeah. the other thing that we talk a lot about is when you're going to come into a session a lot of us will have sat, been sat down all day we'll have been in front of computers in a car at home whatever it is we don't come in with optimal posture so aside from injury prevention or injury rehabilitation it's just helping you to get back to undo some of the the, the nasty kind of positions you've been in for the rest for the, for the most part of the day so that's that's for that's for a pre-session don't end up doing half an hour of, of self-massage release before a session because it too much of it would decrease the neural drive to the muscles and that's not going to help the main outcome of the session however throwing in at the end of a session there's some research that came out that said that foam rolling after a hard session can actually increase the recovery time so the study kind of um, it stated that um, we could get a peak onset of DOMS at 24 hours rather than 48 hours and then, then power output actually was back to normal at 48 hours yeah. rather than 72. So actually by doing a bit of foam roll afterwards, the upshot of that is you can speed recovery by 24 hours. Yeah. So I was, I was going to touch on that to say that Done. in our framework, we don't go, <laughs> we, don't, we, we, we haven't talked about it a lot, so it's a good question from him about mm. trying to speed up recovery and aid recovery. And it's something I'm not personally very good at myself. We stop training and walk straight out of the gym. Yeah, because we're just sort of what's happening next and maybe prioritizing that a little bit but certainly if you've if you've if it's something you really do want to try and improve in terms of your recovery we don't in the framework go movement prep movement patterning apply strength capacity strength and then add on yeah movement prep again but to say that actually some of the release work you're doing in that movement prep you can do 
at the end to try and help speed up that for sure. Um, just to direct you in the um, in the begin in the free beginners guide, the movement prep work. There's some self um, myofascial release or self massage using a, a lacrosse ball for the lats, which Tim um, goes through and explains in detail about that. That's in the free beginners guide. It's that same tutorial is also on YouTube, so you can see that and just take. Yes, that's one muscle, but you can take that principle that's explained there and you can apply it to any muscle that feels like it's got some tight knots yeah. into it. The only thing to say where is if you've got tingling or your arm goes numb. You're rolling nerves, don't roll nerves, stick to muscles. Um, but just, yeah, if you do nothing else, start your session with some release work. And that is gonna, I, 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 I often say to people, that if you've got a niggle or something which feels a bit grotty, 90% of the time, you can stop that from going any further with a little bit of targeted release work. Um, and that means that if you, if you ignore it, then you're gonna find your, your way onto the physio couch. So just be proactive about it, put it in the beginning of every session, you, you're doing something to maintain movement quality and enhance your session, Decrease injury, that's got to be worth five to ten minutes before you get into, into the main body work. Cool. So, hopefully that has helped you, um, whether it was your question that was being answered or whether just the question was something that may trigger some thoughts in your mind, give you some things to get really important for us is that you can then go away and you can take some of those points out of those three questions and those answers and go away and start implementing and actually make a change with your training and, and it helps you improve your training. We recognise with some things that we're not always perfectly prescriptive, but if you, if you read any of our material from our ebooks, you'll know that our purpose is to educate you to make decisions for yourself. We, don't, we actually want you guys to become self-sufficient rather than going, I need Tim and Jacko to tell me what I'm going to do next week. Understand the principles of what you're trying to do, become more um, educated and knowledgeable about yourself, your own needs and what your situation is like, and then you, you're just going to get so much more from your training rather than me and Dave just going, here's five sessions that you should do this week. And I've just made it even worse because I referred to you and Dave and Jacko in the same bit of chat. Same one. Same person. It's the one Maybe you can do like, Jacko is the, when I've got the top knot up and you Dave know, when it's You're down. not having more than one person. You've already got Question Master. <laughs> We're not adding another one to the mix. Adding <laughs> another personality. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I hope, you've, uh, I hope you've enjoyed that. If you haven't yet subscribed and you've made it all the way to the end of the video, click up there. By Which was an achievement today, uh, I think. If you haven't, um, I haven't got our free beginners guide, that's a no brainer you can get that from the website down there. And if um, you want to check out some of the other Q&As, last week's Q&A is up there. So until next week, class dismissed. <laughs>